Dude, uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to sit down and chat and, uh, and uh, yeah, answer a few, a few questions from a fellow artist uh, and uh, for sure an admirer of your work. Um, I mean, when I, when I discovered your interface series, I, I'm assuming that's how most people kind of come across your work. That, that's how I discovered your work. Um, yeah. It struck me as just being very fresh and original and uh, it, I found it really compelling because it didn't resemble, like especially visually and just in the way the story is told as well, it didn't feel familiar to me. So it was, it was very engaging to me because of how kind of fresh it was. Um, so I really want to kind of start off by asking you, you know, where, like, with interface but with your work in general where does that come from like where where do you pull that out from how do you create that yeah i'm uh well for interface i i mean i have a background in screenwriting and film production because i went to uh for my university i went to a film academy or film school it was actually an art school but they had like a film building and so i was like I had trained, like I learned how to like write scripts and how to like write a story and stuff. Um, but when I started Interface, I like didn't really even think about any of that stuff. You know, it was kind of just like, um, I was really just kind of experimenting almost because I was seeing so many animations on YouTube. And um, I was doing these, like I had made three animations before, like those uh, Ronald McDonald and the Grimace and the... Uh, Hamburglar and uh, parodies, whatever. And then I wanted to start doing something original. Uh, and uh, I don't know, like back in 2009, I had this comic that I drew. And uh, it was like basically the first episode of Interface where there's a guy waiting for the bus. And then this like big pink noodle guy shows up and just like says hello to him basically and turns into a bus. But <laughs> he actually doesn't turn into a bus. He, he just says he's a bus. Um, but I don't know. So I guess I just recreated that comic without really thinking about anything, really. And then, you know, the the way it is, is just it's so spontaneous because, like, I don't know, maybe it's because I wasn't really thinking about, like, the tra traditional way of, like, how I would present a story, you know? Typically, the first scene in a film, you want to, like, I don't know, you want to, like, introduce your characters and, like, make them sort of you want to like engage with the characters almost immediately you know but i don't know there's something funny about like just um mischief just coming in and slapping a cigarette out of his hand and telling his backstory in like 30 seconds you know it's just unexpected but i, I really don't i didn't really like plan it out you know it just kind of happened i don't really know what to say about that well, we'll see that that humorous side of uh of what you write and what you animate where, where does that humorous side come from? Because the backdrop for me of what you create is quite melancholic. It's very thickly atmospheric. It's sometimes moody, you know, sometimes a bit sad. So where does that little humorous twist pop up? Where, where, where does that come from for you personally? Uh, I don't really know because, like, I don't know. Like, I've been making music for so long, and I find that the music I make is what's dictating the story of Interface. And the music, I can't seem to make, like, I can't seem to make music that's not, like, dark and kind of, like, um, uh, melancholic, I guess. I just, this is not in me, really. And, but when I'm, when it comes to, like, the cartoon part, like, the animation part, it's almost, like, a little bit of the opposite, where I can just draw silly stuff, and it's funny, make funny jokes. But so you combine the two, and it, because the music and the soundtrack works together with the animation, it's almost like, you're expecting it to be a little bit more serious all the time, and then suddenly, you know, just the nature of the cartoon, like, it's just something funny is going to happen eventually, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's some episodes that are more serious, too. That's another thing about YouTube and stuff. I mean, I find that a lot of it is just 100% comedy or 100% wacky silliness or just, like, crazy loud. And I wanted to make something that was more, like, trying to be, like... um I don't know, like something you'd watch on like a uh, like HBO miniseries or something, but it just happens to be drawn in this really crude paint style, you know? So uh, an episode, how does it start? Because you just mentioned it's like the music. And then is it built on the music? Like the animation comes after 
you know the the sound design or the music is that how it works for you for the, for the first like part of interface pretty much all the songs were made before i made the animation and before i even came up with the script and so that's kind of weird because like um uh, you know i have all these like puzzle pieces of episodes that didn't really connect to one another and it's because i was just listening to the music and kind of like visualizing some sort of scene that would happen that would make sense for the music and i wasn't really concerned about the story making sense uh and then like around episode 9 to 12 i started thinking about how i can connect the episodes together and so i'd have to um like write a little bit of script before making the music like i have to know like i would know like okay so i'm going to set up this episode so that the next episode this is going to happen or i need to fill in the backstory of this particular part here because you know later i want to flush out something else and so i started thinking more about the script rather than just completely going off of the music that i was making because you know i feel like if i didn't start considering the script the interface would have been i don't know people probably would have still enjoyed it but maybe it wouldn't have made it wouldn't really feel like a linear story after the whole thing is finished you know what i mean yeah yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, like your pro your your process actually evolved to accommodate the the thing that was becoming the the thing the interface was becoming, right? Yeah. And you started to see it more in like a big picture, I guess. And I, I feel like I still do that. You know, if I'm having a problem with the script or whatever, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. I'm just gonna mess around on the keyboard, whatever, for weeks, sometimes months, until something happens, and then. I know what to do next. That's why it takes me so long to make an episode because it's not necessarily the animation. It's actually um, like the, what is the message of the episode? Like what's going to happen and does it make sense now? And I want the characters to be like, I don't really, there's some episodes I made where I feel like they're not as, they're not as strong as they could be, but I want like almost every episode to be like a self-contained kind of interesting moment, you know? And mm. so, mm. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's interesting. So, um, like, for you on a personal level, right, when you're sitting down to compose, to create the music, or to write for an episode, or just in general when you're making something, what what is it that inspires you? Like, what is it that fuels what you're making? Because, like, what you're making is, like, this funneled, you know, there's lots of things coming into this machine, and then you create what you create so what is it that inspires you it's i don't really know where i mean i i've always get that question i don't really know what to say because you know um i listen to a lot of other artists on spotify and youtube music and stuff and um that's generally where i get a lot of inspiration from but not necessarily the inspiration to create a web series I mean, I've seen other YouTubers that make web series, so I guess I could say that they inspired me. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't necessarily like I don't know. Like it's it's hard to like explain what what the drive is to keep making these animations. You know, I find that every five ten years I want to do something different. You know, so like ten years ago I was making documentaries and and uh, making music, but I wasn't making animations. 10 years before that, like when I was a teenager, I used to make animations, like little Lego animations and stuff. And then there would be a period of time where I just wanted to make paintings. And now it seems to be, you know, I'm getting towards the end of interface. And I know people keep wanting me to make more animations and stuff, but I'm finding it like almost pretty difficult to do. I'm like, it's like, you know, I'm like, I don't know if I really want to keep doing this forever because like, it's just something that's doesn't you know and the thing is weird about it's like i got this big fan base and i've been working on it for three years right and it's like how am i going to keep doing this because i don't got i don't like the drive to keep doing it is like it's like it's like fluctuating you know and uh, and the thing is though the animations have been like the biggest driver for me to actually get out there in terms of people listening to my music and stuff you know when I first started, the, the the whole purpose of the animations was to combine them with my music so that people could find my music. Because, you know, like my Bandcamp stats were like, I don't know, like four sales over the period of like eight years or something, <laughs> you know. But 
that was kind of my goal. And now I'm like, you know, I just find it difficult mainly because I know I'm just so isolated here sitting on the computer all day drawing, you know? Yeah, man. So, it's tough, so right? Is it, is it fair to say that you're feeling conflicted about, I guess, what's next? Like, what's the strategy for you now as an artist? Is that fair to say? Yeah. yeah. For sure, yeah. I mean, I was, I was thinking, like, you know, maybe I could get, like, a little studio and hire some people to help me animate or... Or maybe I should just write a script, you know, and try to pitch it to some network or something, you know. Because I feel like, you know, with YouTube and stuff, there's it's just all YouTube animators, like, I think they're going to hit a wall of it at some point, you know, because, like, you, and I, I find the ones that keep making stuff, like, every other week, like, they make a new animation every week. I'm just like, how the hell does he do that? Like, what the... You know, and people say that to me, too, because I, I release one, like, once a month, and I, and for a lot of animators, that's quite a lot you know but uh it's like working almost every day right and then after it after after a while it kind of drags you down a bit you just want to work on something without having to you know like um put something out there to like a, you know, appease the the algorithm almost because if you don't put something out once in a while you're going to kind of fade to obscurity just the nature of the platform you know yeah, especially with animation, and animation's so time-consuming, you know, as as a as an art form. So yeah, I totally hear you. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So, so, but with the inspiration question as well, right? I get that that's a generic question, but it's interesting what you're telling me now because what I mean by that question is like, what excites you? What are you excited about? Especially now that you're like, I guess, eventually going to have to make a decision on what you do as you round off interface and as you th think ahead, what are you excited about doing? <clears throat> I think, well, well, for now it's, um, I just want to get back to making like shorter, silly stuff, you know, because the thing is that the interface is so like, it's such a long, like serious kind of, I mean, there's comedy in there, but it's like, it's such a, it's almost a feature length film at this point, you know, once, once the episode last one comes out, it's going to be like over 120 minutes or whatever. And, it's like it's just a big project for me and i want to maybe just work on a few go back to like when i started my channel just make just like silly videos once in here here or there right and then maybe work on a script on the side so that and then try to get like funding and do like a, a real movie you know because um i don't know if i could do another full like long series it's just a very uh it's a very draining sort of thing to do, honestly, by yourself. You know, I'm not, I'm not just here by myself. Caroline and my fiance, she helps me animate and stuff. But it's basically just me and her working in here, and you know. And another thing too is like, it's really hard. It's not so bad in the winter time because it's like snowy and crappy out. But like in the summer, it's like beautiful outdoors. I'm like, oh, I can go outside and it's sunny out, or I could just sit here and draw. <laughs> On my computer. <laughs> yeah, right. I hear you. Do you feel like you have the kind of uh, legitimacy now with, you know, on, on, on where you are now with kind of what you've built? Uh, if you want to go like a step higher, like what you're talking about, writing a script, I don't know, for a movie or whatever, and, and pitching that to a studio and trying to make something like more next level where it's not just you. Uh, do you feel kind of like mm, a certain level of confidence with that idea? Yeah, I, I do that, and I do for sure now. Um, and and it's not just because you know I I managed to get a fan base, but it's also because the writing the first twenty three episodes of Interface basically was like a big training process for me in terms of how to approach a story and how to make it all you know how to empathize with characters and and uh, it was almost like yeah I went to film school I did a script you know for my thesis film but I didn't really write that much you know and didn't actually see it through any of the, the things i made right so now i feel like if i were to start something fresh i would have a, a better perspective on uh how to uh, write a story which is kind of weird if you think about because it's like now well maybe i'm losing some of the spontaneous aspects of, from interface because back then i wasn't really sure what i was doing right and if I start doing it now, maybe I'm going to overwrite it or overthink about scenes. And I definitely do that too much sometimes as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, because I mean, like you said, it's nearly 120 minutes now of of content just from just from that series, like outside, you yeah. know, the other kind of videos and skits that you've done. So, like, what what comes to mind for you off the top of your head? If I ask, like, where you're at now, what you've learned basically now compared to when you started, because it's been so much work, so much, like you said, like a learning experience, right? So, like, what are the biggest things you've like learned or picked up or realized? <sighs> well, that's tough to say because I mean, I feel like technically I learned a lot. You know, technically I got better at drawing. Music wise, I think I got better at mixing. Uh, it sounds less muddy, but I can't just, it's not something you can just like teach. You can't just say it to someone to do this, but you have to do it. You have to learn by doing basically, you know, it's like a craft almost. Yeah. But in terms of like story and stuff, that's another, that's like a hard one for me to even say too, because I, you know, sometimes I'm still f struggling to figure out what exactly I'm trying to do. You know, if I were to say for anyone out there who's trying to make an animation, you have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of this animation? And does it feel like it's contributing anything new? And, um, but the kind of paradox of saying that is um, I find a lot of stuff on YouTube that's very successful really doesn't have a purpose. It's just there to exist for the fact that it's a funny video, you know, or something silly, right? And so me saying that is almost like maybe you shouldn't take my advice because you, you really – this is almost like this. it's like hard to – it's really difficult to say what's going to be successful or not. And um, I guess I can say one more thing is like uh, – so I did this video recently of uh, – the it's like a Grubhub parody, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that commercial is really obnoxious and – I basically put it in the, like a television while there's like this homeless guy watching the, the screen, right? And I was when I was making it, I was like, man, I shouldn't release this video. But then I just put it out anyway, and it was like one of my most successful videos. And I'm like, I can't predict the success anymore. You know, I don't know who's going to do well or not. It's almost like you just got to just keep making stuff and throwing it out there and see what sticks. It's like volume over uh, volume over. Uh, quality you know or or what you think is quality isn't necessarily the quality people want you know yeah mm -hmm. interesting <laughs> so what's the um because you mentioned purpose like a moment ago what what's your what's your feeling when it comes to purpose what what are what's your view on that topic like i i mean one of the things i wanted to ask you anyway was like I get hints and undercurrents in, especially interface, but even in general with what you do of kind of existentialist, you know, philosophy and just like, but it, but it's never in your face, you know, and it's also never like uh, trying too hard. It's just an undercurrent. So what's your, I don't even know how I would phrase the question, but like, what's your vibe or, or how do you experience like purpose or existentialism or existence? I feel like so for for instance, if you were to all the famous movies that like why is the Godfather so popular or why why you know why are those westerns so popular at the time that they were popular or sci fis I feel like the reason why they were so successful is because they were a reflection of the society at the time, like they're not necessarily about society at the time, but they kind of they represent like the i don't know the kind of like feeling of the people have and so i feel like if you're if you want to create artwork that's really resonating with people you should have like there should be like uh aspects of it that reflect our current society and to some degree and so i try to i, I don't do it necessarily consciously it's just these are things i think about all the time you know and it kind of comes out of the work it's like, you know, in Canada, we got some problems with uh, people aren't getting, the wages haven't really increased with inflation, right? There's a lot of people having struggling to find work even. And then there's this housing crisis we got in Canada. And so I feel like a lot of young people are feeling dejected and a little bit um, like they don't really know what their purpose is, you know, and that sort of thing. And that's kind of one of the, the you know, the character and in interface, Mich uh, Henrik, 
he's kind of the same way, you know, he's like, what is my purpose now? I just keep living forever and for what? Because, you know, all those things are happening around me and the world's moving on without me, right? And I'm staying the same. And that's actually another thing I kind of forgot to, about to mention. When I started writing Interface, there was one thing I did plan out that wasn't just based on the music, which was I was going to make Henrik kind of a character that people can feel like they are if that makes any sense like um he doesn't speak so it's kind of like you kind of feel like you can be henrik almost you know it's like he's your inner voice and so um when you're going on his journey throughout the series it's kind of like a reflection of the you know like you're saying there's like undercurrents of like you know moments of you know what we're going through and I don't know. It's just weird. We got this whole coronavirus thing and the government making sure that we have our best interests in mind and stuff. And it's kind of just like that's sort of what happened throughout Interface towards the end there, you know, trying to, you know, government control over society and uh, just sort of having been a reflection of what's going on. That wasn't necessarily, uh, I mean, obviously I didn't predict coronavirus in 2017. I think it's just, it's similar to like, you know, movies like Brazil or like 1984 or, or previous movies that existed. And uh, I think it's happening even more now with Facebook and social media sites being so popular. People don't really consider the fact that you're like being monitored like even more than ever, you know, and uh, literally anything you do can be used against you. And because 90% of what people do these days is connected to the web, that means you got to be real careful about anything really, you know. So... um yeah, I don't know. I just, with Interface, I'm trying to, you know, I have to kind of, like, mention these things, but without mentioning them directly. You know what I mean? That's always through metaphors and and uh, and, and the scene and stuff, like you say, because otherwise it feels like so, like, on the nose and in your face, right? But sometimes people like it to be obvious. Sometimes they want it to be obvious that, you know, what you're saying is, is this and that, right? Right, right. With, with the the Grubhub video uh, that you mentioned too, how you were like almost uh, hesitant to, to, to share it, to publish it. Have you had that in the past where you've made something and you were like afraid to publish it? Um, just trying to think about that one. Or do you generally feel like, you know, what you're making, you're like pretty happy about putting it out and you're not scared, I don't know, you'll be like viewed differently as an artist or like judged for the content you're creating? Yeah, I mean, I guess like, okay, so for one thing, I made this video with uh, the Minute Hour. It was, um, mm. it was, uh, it's this kid snorting candy and stuff and like passing out. I was like, maybe I shouldn't release that. Ah, whatever, I'll release it anyway. And that one also did pretty well. So I don't know, like, you need to be more dangerous as an artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, with the, would you say you're melancholic as a person? Honestly, if I'm, in, if I'm being honest, like I'm kind of like a quiet, like dry person for the most part. Like I, I, yeah, uh, I have a hard time like opening myself up to people, you know? I'm really introverted, but uh, like with my girlfriend, I'm silly with her. Carolina, my fiance. I'm fil- silly with her all the time, right? But you know, we've been together for like ten years, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because for for me, for me, like the, a lot of the atmosphere in your work uh, seems seems to have like roots in I don't know, just like a melancholic kind of vibe in a really beautiful way. Like melancholy is one of my favorite. Uh, I don't know emotions or atmospheres when it's in media when it's in like you know like interface your series or 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 movies you know it's it seems so yeah it seems so rich as like a a setting to tell a story if that makes sense so that's why i was curious about about you i don't know i don't know it's like um it's it's something to do with the fact that i like watching sci-fi movies so much it's like i'm always trying to figure out what's the purpose of why we're here you know and i feel like sci-fi movies are they're not just they're not just like cool you know machine movies and rockets and stuff it's all i feel a lot of the good ones the good ones are about like you know the fact that we're still on a you know there's still a 
space with like trillions of stuff out there we don't even understand yet right you know i'm always thinking about like what is like how, like i don't know it just it just i have a hard time like empathizing with the problems that we have on earth sometimes when you think about like the fact that we're just basically bacteria on like a rock you know in the grand scheme of things mm-hmm. I, I have a hard time like I don't know. It's just that's it. Just comes through in the music, I guess. That's the way it is. Like you know, I'm kind of like that, I guess, in some degree. Do you think about that kind of stuff a lot, like space and and that whole perspective, that whole scale that we that we exist in? I think about it like a lot, but uh, you know, I the thing is like, man, there's like this whole like thing, and we got these people like Elon Musk, right? He's like launching rockets up in the Mars and stuff. And there's people on the other side that are like, yeah, but we got to take care of our own first on Earth, you know? And it's like, but come on, like, what, we're going to be stuck on Earth forever if we do that, you know? We can't, everyone, not everyone can, we can't have a perfect utopia on Earth, right? So there's going to be some people out there, we got to get out there and explore things. And it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say or even what I'm saying right now. Um, it's just, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm just having a difficult time, especially in Canada, kind of like uh, empathizing with a lot of the problems that we have on Earth when I know that, you know, there's just so many strange things about life we don't really even understand yet, you know? Yeah, yeah, we're on the same page. Well, th- this, yeah. this for me is reminding me of uh, a question you raise in one of your interface episodes, one of the more recent ones, which is one of my favorite questions, which is why do we build right yeah so why do we build why do you raise that question what do you think about that question why do you build yeah exactly i don't know that's the, that's the thing I, it's like i'm asking myself that question almost uh-huh. you know i see mischief as almost like a like an alter ego to myself sometimes you know when i'm writing his lines it's like almost something i would say you know i just it's just kind of like the sillier portion of me that i don't really express in real life you know mm-hmm. and um and he's he's kind of explaining these things like it's like what is this, the purpose of all this stuff we're making you know so it's, well, what is this, you know and I feel like a lot of that's too when I'm watching uh, cartoons on YouTube or watching television shows I'm just like and you know if if people want me to make like a feature length film or something I'm like okay but what's the purpose of it you know what I mean like what is it now I see some of these shows getting made by Netflix I'm just like what, why does this need to exist like really like other than just pure consumption and wasting your brain cells like what is the purpose of this you know what I mean like I mean and that's the other way too you know and so you can say the same thing about really good movies you're like well what really what did that do for me other than really make me enjoy it you know and it's just like what did I get out of it? it's just pure entertainment you know that's these are just questions that I think about right I don't really necessarily have an opinion on them Right. or have an answer for them either you know i feel like that's the thing about interface i want people to start thinking about things like this not necessarily having an answer for them because i don't have any answers really yeah well, what's what's one of the things then that makes you just happiest in life out of like any it can be anything like what's just something in life that make that makes it worthwhile that makes it enjoyable that makes you you know happy for me, I don't. The thing that makes me the happiest is when I get people telling me that they've been like inspired by my series, or they, and they that it made them want to make something themselves, or mm. it's or it's making them motivated to do something creative, or 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 it makes them want to whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be creative. It just there makes them want to do good in whatever field that they're going into. That makes me feel the best because it kind of does feel like maybe at that point that there is a purpose to it all because at least, you know, I'm helping some other people out, even if that wasn't necessarily my intention. You know, I wouldn't, I didn't make interface being like, I'm going to make this to inspire people. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it just happened. And I didn't really mean for it to happen that way. But uh, that's, you know, that's another one of the things that's been continuing to make me work on the animations and series is because, you know, if it wasn't for those people, uh, I don't know what I would be doing really. So yeah. that's probably one of the things that makes me the happiest, I guess. And yeah, that's a great answer. You know, it's funny. Like, I, I think if you'd set out with the intention of inspiring people, like interface would not exist. I don't know what you would have made, but it would not look like that. You know. Right. Yeah. 
to me, for what it's worth, you've shown leadership as an artist because you've created something so fresh and original. And this is just my view, but I, a lot of people share it. And because you've just done your thing and you've made something that it seems you enjoyed making and it seems you were excited about creating this world, this universe, telling this story, watching it evolve, uh, that, you know, that is just so powerful when someone makes something like that. Because when people see it, they're so drawn to it. It's so new. They're like, it's, 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 yeah, it's so unique. And so that's inspiring because people, it doesn't remind them or it, it can remind them of things, but it's so like original that it's like, oh, wow. It's, it's, right. it's leadership. It's setting an example, you know, in a niche, in a, in a form, in an art form. And you're also refreshing an art form, which is like 2D animation and, and the way that you create the you know you have great sound design i feel like that's so underrated or like not underrated but people don't necessarily know how important no, sound important. design is so your your whole content is so well-rounded uh in terms of production quality and it's deceptive too because if you just look if you saw a still of interface or any of your animations you would have no idea of the actual experience that you have when you watch it because you have the sound you have the storytelling you have the humor you have the the moods and it shifts and you have the you know use of color that that that's uh that i guess is unique to you or or that that's proper to you you know um so yeah that that to me is like showing leadership as an artist and so that automatically inspires people because it's setting a standard in a sense yeah yeah for to that effect i would say you know the, if you know, there's people should not feel afraid that they're uh, taking from another artist. Like when you're inspired by something, you want to emulate what that person's doing, and that's what I always did in terms of music and stuff. Uh, and even not, not I mean, you know, I would see something I like, and I would take aspects of it and incorporate it in my own work. You know, uh, it's like uh, it, like you were saying, it's it feels original, but it's not it's not totally original you know what i mean like everything's based on what was seen made before right yeah. and so uh, i think people should just don't feel like afraid of too much about um like incorporating whatever influences you have into your own work because you know you're not going to really be able to create something completely unique on your own you really are based you know are, you're based on the things that were made before you which is also kind of it's a kind of like a running theme and interface almost you know for uh, mischief and stuff he's kind of like comprised of all the things that became became before him you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. what well, what's the what what's the writing process like for you specific to storytelling like how how do you how do you create the story how how does that work for you you know so for now, like the past like seven or eight episodes is getting pretty more, it's more important that I have a story that connects together and makes sense and stuff. And uh, it, I'm working on the last episode right now. And it's arguably one of the, probably the most important episodes because I have to tie all the loose ends together without it just seeming like exposition, you know? And... Um, I want it to feel satisfying and um, generally my process for doing that is uh, I'll come up with an idea like I say okay what if this happened or this happened right and then that happened and I'll just I'll give it to Carolina who was my fiance and she she also went to film school that's where I met her gotcha. so she has a writing background too and so and so she will tell me whether or not something's working or not and um, then I'll just start writing it out like in the script program like I got this program called fade in and I just write it out and then I try to forget about it. Like I just, I write it and forget about it. Like come back in a week. Right. And then I'll rewrite all the dialogue. Cause the thing is after you come back after a week, you're like, man, this is like cringe. Like I'm like cringing at what I wrote. Like it's so bad, like campy or like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, and the thing oh. is you do that, the more you do that, the better the script gets. And then after you do it like for like a month or two months and, you, and then you get to a point where you're like, I, I think this is fine. I don't need to change anything. Then, then, then that's when I like basically say, okay, I'm going to lock it down and start really getting these animations pieces together. Cause mm -hmm. yeah, that's the, that's the only way I can really write a script is it just, I write something out and if it's garbage, I know it's pretty much garbage. Right. But then I'll come back later and then fix it. Cause you, I feel like you need to have like a period of time. You need to like, you need to like not think about it 
for a couple of days and just come back with, with a fresh mind. You can't speed that process up. You know what I mean? It's the same thing goes for music too. Sometimes I'll make like a, a composition and sit on it for like a month mm-hmm. or just sometimes, sometimes more than a month, sometimes like three months and then I come back and then messing around with it. Cause like, you just need to like hear it with fresh ears or see it or, or to really have a objective perspective on how it's coming across, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense with, uh, with, with your music and, uh, and the sound design that you do and just working with audio, working with music, do you get it like, what, what, what is it you enjoy most about that? Cause it seems like that's been the foundation of, of a lot of what you do and that it's maybe is, is music as well. Like one of the oldest, you know, things you've been doing in terms of creativity so what, what yeah. do you enjoy most about about that you know making music and working with audio uh, um i don't i don't really know it's just because it's like sometimes i'm just doing it almost for like a therapeutic sort of thing for myself you know because if i like, can't sleep in the middle of the night i'll just come in here and play on my keyboard really? for a bit and I, what i do is like, i just press the record button right and just mess around for like an hour and sometimes there's some good stuff in there sometimes i get absolutely nothing out of that right Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know how it is so like that's i don't know i just kind of like like one of those things i need to do because like if i can't sleep i'm having problems sleeping and stuff at least i can just kind of play music and not have to think about anything you know right okay okay yeah yeah Yeah, that's, that's it i guess yeah yeah so is it is it kind of like an escape for you yeah, I'd say that's probably what it is, yeah. Yeah, okay. Because, like, for me with, uh, like, I, I make a lot of music and work with audio quite a bit. And the reason I wanted to ask you that question is, like, for me, the process itself is so enjoyable. It's like you're just creating something from nothing. Yeah. And it's like, and you can sometimes surprise yourself. Sometimes you, like do something or play something or create something like musically and you're like whoa and then you build an idea from that and it's like just so inherently enjoyable because it's almost like you don't even know what's gonna come next you know you know yeah i totally get that and that's the best feeling too is when you like you play something just spontaneously on the keyboard and you're like oh jesus (laughs) i gotta like save that one you know and sometimes you go back and you look and you press record and you're like fuck (laughs) because i don't i can't actually like I can't consciously play the keyboard. Like yeah. I'm not like not, I'm not trained at all, so I can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I have to like record it and then finesse it afterwards. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, listen, man. I have one more question for you. Yeah. Um, over over the past kind of I guess couple of years, right? Just in life, not even necessarily as an artist or as a creator, but just in life in general. What do you feel like you've learned recently, like over the past couple of years? What What's like a significant thing that just comes to mind that maybe you weren't aware of in the same way or maybe it's something new you realize. Maybe it's like a perspective on life. Maybe it's a view on yourself or others or art or, you know, what's what's something new that you've learned, a lesson that you've learned? Oh, uh. Or it can be a significant way that you've changed or evolved. That's a that's a tough one because uh, I don't you know I it's like what did I what have I learned over the you know sometimes I feel like I'm developing vices and so I'm actually going the opposite direction you know I'm like not learning anything you know well, that's not a wrong answer you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe that's what it is i mean i feel like you know there isn't really any real like you know i guess if there's one thing it's just that if you find something that you that you're able to do and it's it's making you um uh kind of like um, at peace or whatever um if you're finding that you're spending too much time doing one thing and you feel like like exhausted mentally from doing it then just stop doing it. Like I used to browse the internet way too much. Like I used to have an internet addiction. And like, um, when I started animating and, uh, it actually, 
it kind of helped a lot because it's like, well, now <clears throat> I'm just drawing pictures, listening to music, and I'm not wasting time doing this and that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, browsing the internet, whatever it is they're, they're you know, because it's really easy now. All these websites are so set up to be like, you know, a constant feed of information that you don't even really need most of the time, you know, on your day-to-day life, you nothing's changing, but out on the internet, there's like people losing their minds like yeah. every day, like outrage, you know, yeah. but you go outside and it's just, you know, it's, it's birds outside. There's people just being friendly out on the street. And uh, sometimes you got to just um, take a step back and just focus on whatever it is you're creating and not necessarily the noise. I guess that's maybe that's the one thing I learned, you know, mm. for sure. Uh. That's a great answer. Are you are you searching for peace in some sense? Are you are you uh, questing for some form of peace? Well, yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. I just I'm just trying to. Uh, it's you, it's one thing you gotta. I think there's a lot of people these days that it's just the internet is playing too large of an important role in their lives. And um, you know, the ironic thing is that now my whole career is based around it. Basically, you know, yeah. YouTube and stuff, right? But. I'm trying to take a step back as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. Justin, uh, it's honestly a, a, a privilege to be able to sit down and chat with you, uh, ask you all of these uh, sometimes personal questions. Um, and it's it's like so, it's so like just powerful to have a sense of the person behind the machine behind the interface like behind the art behind this universe it's a universe all on its own not just interface everything that you do creatively like as an artist so like speaking with the person hearing from the person understanding the person even just on a shallow level right to a superficial degree like we've been speaking for 40 minutes but it's uh it makes a world of difference because it gives you like just this appreciation that you can't have otherwise, you know, right. you just see the art and, and you have a, an idea of the person behind it. Cause you have the message, you know, but yeah, it's, it's being able to speak with the person. It's massive. So I really, really appreciate it. Oh, of course. Uh, thank you for the interview. Raul. <laughs> <laughs>